Donald Trump just had a rally over at Madison Square Garden and it's going viral. And no, it's not because, you know, he ended up helping some old lady cross the street or even save the cat from a tree. It, no, you will never see a video like that go viral for Donald Trump. No, instead what happened was that there was a speaker by the name of Tony Hinchcliffe. If you don't know, he's a comedian. He has his own channel here on YouTube. It's called the Kill Tony Podcast. And, you know, it's just people going up there, telling jokes, roasting each other. This nigga Ian look like a strong cancer patient, boy. Get your ass. And nigga run three miles from mesothelioma. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you wish you were in cancer shape. <laughs> God. Yes, sir. Some pretty intense stuff, as you can see. And their channel is known for creating this kind of humor. So you can only imagine what kind of uh, humor he brought to Madison Square Garden at a Trump rally. It it was not good and it went viral. There's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. OK, all right. <laughs> OK. We're getting there. That joke landed flat on his face. It was not a good joke in my opinion. It was not properly structured. It was it was bad. It was terrible. And uh, the Republicans thought the same thing as well. Okay. All right. You didn't really hear many Republicans laugh or even cheer on that. Yeah, the Republicans weren't too happy about that. And you could tell that they weren't too happy about that because right after that comment, I believe, he ends up talking about Democrats and the entire arena erupted. The other side's got a lot of crazy endorsements. Swift, Eminem, Leo DiCaprio, Beyonce. Every day the Democratic Party looks more and more like a P. Diddy party. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's what you guys want. All right. Yeah, and even Tony Hinchcliffe noticed that, yeah, like, Okay, it's clear what these people want. They want me to make fun of Democrats. Another thing is that he wasn't just making fun of Puerto Ricans, Latinos. Uh, he was also making fun of Jews and, of course, black people. I think that one was crazy. Cool black guy with a thing on his head. What the hell is that? A lampshade? Look at this guy. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I'm just kidding. That's one of my buddies. He had a Halloween party last night. We had fun. We carved watermelons together. It was awesome. You guys are, this is a groany little morning crowd, huh? I mean, when you're talking about how black people are carving watermelons for Halloween, the pe the people are going to groan and they're going to be like, oh, that's too far, man. You know, like this is not good, all right? And it's not good because now certain people in a Democratic Party, like AOC, they're going around to different talk shows and talking about how this is not a Trump rally. This is a hate rally. There's a couple of things. As you mentioned, this was not... This was a hate rally. Mm -hmm. This was not just a presidential rally. This was also not just a campaign rally. I think it's very important for people to understand that these are many January 6 rallies. These are many stop the steal rallies. These are rallies to prime an electorate into rejecting the results of an election if it doesn't go the way that they want. Yeah, so you can see that AOC is flexing her propaganda. I mean, that, that stat is maxed out because she's using every inch of propaganda that she can. She's talking about how these are hate rallies, mini January 6th. You know, is that really the case though? I mean, I can see that this is propaganda, you know, because I showed you the clips at the beginning, you know, the Republicans weren't enthused about those jokes, right? When they would talk about Democrats, they were cheering and clapping it up. They were, you know, uproarious. So if you compare those two, you can tell that there was a big difference in how enthused they were when Tony talked about those jokes. Now, I know that there's probably going to be some Republicans like, oh, well, we will never do that. No, man, both parties do that, okay? As a matter of fact, I was watching Tim Pool and Tim Pool was using propaganda to send a message. You know, I'm just, we, we've got to move past this as a country. And a lot of people are saying this, we, we cannot be a whiny baby country that doesn't like jokes. The point of Tony Hinchcliffe's routine is to poke you. Now, to a certain extent, I do kind of agree with uh, Tim Pool here. However, let's stop acting like you guys wouldn't get upset if there was a joke made about Trump and Hitler. Because just imagine, man. Now, again, I just want to go ahead and remind you guys. I don't know if this is true or not. There's a lot of contradicting evidence, but apparently uh, Hitler only had one testicle. Again, don't know if that's true or not. But for the sake of this argument, I'm going to go ahead and use that. Okay. Um, imagine they make a joke 
out of Trump and they say, oh, well, Hitler had more balls than Trump. Wouldn't that make you guys upset? Because for a while now, you guys have been telling people stop comparing Trump to Hitler because that's going to elicit a certain response from someone and they're going to take actions. They're going to attempt to assassinate a certain person. So when I see Tim Pool diminish the significance of these jokes, essentially what he's doing is just thought terminating because he's setting a prime example in your head thinking, yeah, Democrats, they're overreacting. They, they sound like they have a permanent stick installed in their ass. And there's probably going to be some people that are going to argue and say, oh, well, you know, these are not the same. This is a false equivalence. Well, when you look at it as a whole, then yeah, you can point out the differences, but I'm talking about a very specific niche, which is uh, the stimulus and then the behavior that that stimulus is gonna elicit. I think when it comes to telling jokes, I think it's a bit complex, you know? And the reason why I say that is because with some people, some people are gonna be okay with this. You know, there's probably some Puerto Ricans that saw that and they're all like, yeah, I'm fine with that. You know, like the government there is, it is trash, you know? But then there's people like AOC who is also Puerto Rican and she had a problem with that. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. Okay. We're getting there. No. Who is that Jack Wad? Who is that guy? I actually think that's Tony Hinchcliffe, which is super disappointing. I, I mean, I don't, he's a comedian. I mean, it's like super upsetting. Obviously it's super upsetting to me. I, I, my family is from Puerto Rico. I'm Puerto Rican. And like, I need people to understand that when they, when you have some a-hole calling Puerto Rico floating garbage, um, know that that's what they think about you. I think she has every right to feel that way. But at the end of the day, there's going to be people who are going to be making jokes that people are not going to like. And this is one of those examples, you know, um, are you willing to pay the cost to upset some people? If so, then this is the result. Um, but of course, if you end up upsetting the right person or the wrong person like AOC, she could potentially use that as ammo which of course she's using it now. And AOC could use this ammo to either influence people to be against Donald Trump and his speakers, or uh, she can influence these people to be on her side, which most likely she wants on her side. Obviously, if you listen to her rhetoric, that's what she's attempting to do. Uh, that's why it's important to be careful with what you say, because your words definitely have consequences. So yeah, with that being said, I just wanted to go ahead and leave it there. That's all I have for you guys. And yeah, hopefully you guys learned something today.